Welcome to War Thunder. What's up, dude? How y'all doing today? Well, wonderful summer event has launched, and honestly, I gotta tell you, I don't find it to be very interesting at all. Uh, I don't do ground forces, number one, so the two armored cars really just, they mean nothing to me. Um, the naval forces reward HMS Renown, although a lovely ship and probably will be useful in naval forces at some point. Um, I don't do naval forces because the game mode there is just absolutely insane. And as for the Su-25, I already got two of them. Got the Su-25, got the Su-25K. And I'm working on the Su-25T. And if I really wanted to, I could go over and I could buy the Su-39, which is another Su-25. So please, in all honesty, please tell me why I would waste my time and my money on anything with this current crop of rewards. Now, your mileage may vary. If you don't do a lot in the game or you're just starting, these, may, these might sound like good rewards. Good for you. Have fun. For those of us that have been playing for a long time, it really isn't that enticing. I mean, I've still got planes in the Soviet tree that I'm working on. MiG-29, for example. And people are probably going, well, well, well why, why, why aren't you finishing it? I'm not finishing it because top tier in the Soviet tree, the U.S. tree, German, Britain, etc., etc., at nauseum, is a toxic waste dump. It just poor map design and an almost dogged reliance on substandard maps in size. Not to mention aiming everybody at one another with all associated ground targets directly between both teams. If that isn't ignorance in the way of creating a map, I don't know what is. Um... Will I get some of these? I will probably end up with the Su-25. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, summertime pilots. Well, let's just go back here. I got to go through eight achievement levels to get the Su-25 BM. Now, this is not a premium aircraft. This is a event aircraft. It will require spading, which means you're basically getting something you would normally get in the regular tech tree. 
and then have to work like crazy to bring it up to standard. And if I were to actually work and get it, I would go all the way to getting the coupon for sale. Because how many Su 25s do I need? I can get three right now. I've got two. And I can get another one for just playing at top tier. And if I wanted to spend $70, I could buy the fourth one. Now, this one would effectively cost me eh, 9999 eagles. And actually, it would only be about 8,000 eagles. But it, it just, it makes no sense. I mean, I could buy all three of them. Well, actually, four of them. And I would end up with the armored car there, the PZSP WGP 204 parentheses FKWK. Oh my God, where do they come up with these names? Uh, it would end up in my German lineup or French lineup. I'm not sure which one it's in. I don't care. It wouldn't be any of any use to me anyhow. But for 30,000 Eagles, I could get all of them with the ability to sell all three of them. That would be the Renown, the Su-25, and the CT-CV-105 HP on the marketplace. Well... That's $150 worth of eagles. Yeah. I would have to get back at least $150. Which means each one of those would have to go for at least $50. Now, there are people who are going to grind this stuff out. And they're going to grind it, grind it, grind it. And they'll get it for free. Good for you. Good for you, good for me. That's the way it's done. Um, but honestly, I can't see where any one of these vehicles is worthwhile to grind. Again. Naval Forces is a joke. The maps are ridiculous. Ground Forces, again, they're a joke. And I'm not going to waste my time in Ground Forces. I tried it when it first launched. It was okay. And then everyone realized that they could change the graphic settings and the graphic settings made it instantly viewable at any range. Um, so I quit that. Now they say they fixed it. Well, your idea of fixed and my idea of fixed are two completely different things. Um, and then... Again, the Su-25BM. You're not getting a plane that's that much different from the ones that are in the game right now. The only difference is it gets an upgraded weapon called the 
R73. Okay, great. The R73 becomes available in game again and is usable on the Su 25 BM. I am sure that the R73 will become available for the MiG 29s not that far in the future because we're due for an update probably at the end of August, beginning of September. Because that'll be the last update before the birthday update, which is at the end of October, the beginning of November. Or at least the birthday party, if you will. Then there's the December update, which will happen just before Christmas and carry through the new year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoop dee doo. But that's how things are going to go. Um, are these good? Hey, if you're new to the game, they're excellent. Uh, if you've been playing for a long time and you're really high up in naval, let's just take a look real quick. Let's go to Great Britain. And we're going to go to the Blue Water Fleet. We're talking HMS Hood. Another battle cruiser because that's what the Renown is. Renown is a battle cruiser. The Hood has eight 15 inch guns. The Renown has six. Invincible, four 14 inch guns or 13 inch guns. I'm not sure which. Dreadnought, it's got 12 inch guns. Colossus, uh, 12 inch guns. I mean, you're getting a battle cruiser which is lightly armed or armored to give it higher speed. So, yeah, it'll get over here. It'll be all right. Um, if you're used to playing the hood, you play the Renown the same way, and it will be a plane or a ship that you really need to play rough. We've already discussed the Soviet Union um, aviation. Um, Su-25, I don't think it should be at 11.3, like the Su-25T, because you're not getting a big boost in performance over the Su-25 or the Su-25K. The only thing you're really getting with the Su-25T is the anti-IR missile in the back of the plane. And a couple of changes to your ground strike weaponry. But when you're playing in air realistic, it doesn't matter. All that fancy ground strike weaponry doesn't do you any good. So, there's no sense in having it. And Su-39, because it's got a ground search radar, which I haven't got it yet, or will get it. I mean, $70, come on. Um, at $70, is it worthwhile? 
is it worthwhile to get a plane that really is just copy paste? Yeah, there's some differences, but not enough to really make it stand out. And then we've got another Su-25 coming. Yeah, I just don't see it. Better missiles? Okay. All right. Yeah, I can semi-buy into that. But how many are you going to get? Two? And for those two, you have to give up your R-60s? Uh-huh. You're still stuck with two. And you're not getting a plane that has any better performance. You're still speed limited. You're still a heavy aircraft. You're still not going to be able to maneuver. And then for Germany, in the ground forces, I mean, you're basically getting a level one um, premium. It's an armored car, great. Um, but then again, there are other armored cars. And tanks. So, here's where the thing goes sideways. Who cares? But you go back to this, and I don't know where the CTCV 105 goes. It doesn't mean a whole lot to me. It's, again, a tank. So if, if you're just starting out, it might be a worthwhile endeavor to get this thing. And just think of it like this. If you look on the Gaijin store, anything at the level of this is going to cost you between 50 and $60 anyhow. So grinding it would be good. Although you're not going to get any of the upgrades, so you're going to have to grind those too. The same goes for the BM25 or the Su25 BM and the HMS Renown. And the grinding is a waste of time. Now, if they gave us a unique aircraft or a unique ship, well, renowned is unique, but I mostly fly aircraft. I don't drive tanks. I don't drive ships. And to get another Su-25 is like they're laughing at you. They're laughing at me. Going, ha ha, this is all we're going to give you, another Su-25. Why didn't they come up with something different? Was it too much to ask? How about the A-37 Super Tweet? Now, you guys probably don't know what the Super Tweet is. It would be the A-35 or A-37B Dragonfly. Yeah, it's a close air support aircraft. It's not very fast. Only about 500 miles an hour. But it could carry M9s. It could carry bombs between 250 and 750 pounds. It could carry gun pods. 
It could carry napalm. And it was very maneuverable. Matter of fact, it was probably one of the hardest to shoot down planes in Vietnam because it could fly so low and so slow. It was faster than a Sky Raider. It didn't carry as much as a Sky Raider, but it had a minigun in the nose. It had gun pods up to 50 caliber, I believe. I don't believe it had 20 millimeter. Um, it could carry bombs, rockets. It didn't have missiles for air to ground, but it could have a couple of AIM 9s. Granted, they'd probably be at best AIM 9Es. But still, And they were just absolutely cute. If you're wondering why I think they're cute, well, because it's a trainer aircraft that actually made it into war. Now, they could have put out the L-39 Albatross. That would have been a good, inter good plane. And it would do the same ground attack function. As well as looking really cool. They could have put in the Hawk from Great Britain. That's a beautiful little plane. And the U.S. used it as the Goshawk for training. There are many planes they could have done other than a Su-25. But I guess they just got lazy. Again. Alright, I've had enough of this. This is Subdude signing out. Y'all have a pleasant today, a better tomorrow. We'll catch you in the sky in air realistic on the good maps of which there are still too damn few. Subdued. Hey!